We're gonna get started on mounting a new LVS 34 system right here. Best forward facing sonar on the market as far as I'm concerned. I've been running one for a while. I've ran the other ones. This is where it's at as far as forward facing sonar is. So let's get to it. All right, guys. I've got my new Skeeter FXR21. Just put a Garmin Force on there. I mean, as you can see, it's still got, it's never been in the water, right? So now I want to show y'all guys how to put on the live scope. We're going to go through every process. So if you want to know how it goes on the trolling motor, how to hook it up, everything, we're about to show you right now. All right, so we got everything out here for new LVS 34 system. And we're going to get to work putting it on this force here. So first things first, got to have your mount put on there. We're using the perspective style mount for this one. This bracket right here has a, a little keyed spot in it because this shaft has a keyed out set in it. That way it doesn't, I can't spin it around, you know, it, it is where it is. That way it keeps it pointed straight. We're going to get these all four started. All right, so what we're gonna do here, we're just gonna get these down. We're not gonna get them all the way tight. Just that way it holds it in place. Because what we're gonna check for is clearance. So we've got our perspective bracket here. Got our main knob, the shorter shafted one. Do you like the perspective mount? I do. I think it keeps your image a little bit cleaner and this is just a personal opinion versus running it on the shaft. The only time I run it direct to the shaft is if uh, you know you got a 360 mounted up here or something like that, then we'll either opt for the regular shaft mount without the perspective or we'll mount it down here on the barrel. And that's just mainly for clearance to raise your trolling motor up and down with a 360 and keep from having interference. I know there was some there was some thoughts on the perspective mount not being Yeah. But I've noticed a lot of the ones you've been putting on here are now perspective mounts all of them yeah and that's these come with them so that's a they lot used of the to not come with yeah, them yeah, yeah. It's an aftermarket because they come up with it after right um, is it going to get hung up in grass more it can but it's it's one thing about it being on your shaft your trail motor it's going to be a grass catcher one way or the other okay it's just the extent of it you know okay there's a lot of people that when they get up, that's all they're gonna do is fish grass. They take them off. And they coil them up here on underneath the. So the thing about this one, you can't really do that. The only way you can do it is coil it around the head, because the way it's gonna be routed. So what we're looking for here is just clearance down here on the lower end for if you are putting it in perspective. You see right here, we can make that turn. We still got a gap right here. Got room here. So. All right. So for a lot of guys that might not understand what perspective mode is and regular mode and why, how it's turned a certain way. So perspective right here is gonna be your, more like a 360 style view, but at that, you know, 150 degree cone. So you've got a beam right here that's gonna shoot off to this side of the trolling motor because trolling motor's pointing straight forward right now. So you got a beam that's gonna go this way. You got a middle beam that's gonna go straight out. And you've got a bottom beam down here that's going to shoot kind of off to this side and then as you can see from the top side this bracket is angled down just a little bit and that's so that it can hit the bottom and shoot across the bottom and view structure out kind of like a side scan style picture or a 360 style picture versus if you turn all this around now this is going to be regular live scope what we would refer well, to as regular yeah regular forward facing sonar scope. yep they call it forward mode, so it'll be right here. And tell them, like, they... so this is just a, a me tip. You got a mark right here. This is where you're supposed to have it lined up at on this particular part of the mount. That's where you want it, right there. Now, on here, you have these two different notches. The notch that's right here is what would be down mode, which is not what we all consider forward facing sonar this is what they consider to be forward mode now 
personal opinion, a lot of guys share this opinion, even with the old style transducers. One click or so at least beyond that is gonna roll this transducer up a little bit more because most of the time we're not trying to fish directly below the trolling motor. We're trying to fish out in front of the trolling motor. So we wanna be able to see the picture better out there. It's gonna help it focus on your bait a little bit more, you know, being able to see it when it hits the water and track it. And it just makes it a whole lot handier to do. And this other mark is? That other mark down there is your perspective, perspective mark. Perspective mode, yep. so. So if you were to rotate it all the way down there, you'll see now it's pointing directly forward and then that's when you would unlock it here and roll it down to there. And you hit another, there's another mark that shows you. So there's only two marks here? Yep. Okay. And then back up right there to forward mode. Even for me, you know, I had, I had live scope, but this is a newer version of, I didn't have this transducer. So okay. even, even to me and a lot of guys, they haven't seen this. Yeah, that's correct. It's still relatively new. It came out this last year. Um, and there's still a lot of guys, you know, floating around with the uh, LVS 32 systems versus this 34. The 34 is just an increased target separation. So basically, you know, meaning if you've got fish out, you know, 40, 50 foot in front of you sitting on the stump, with this transducer, they're going to be easier to distinguish between the stump and the fish and see the size of the fish versus the 32. And also, they got rid of. I would say virtually all of the ghost tree. Now there is going to be that quote unquote ghost tree if you run your settings very, very hot is what I call it, which is a high level of gain, you know, not a lot of noise rejection, you know, no filters. That's still going to get you some of that clutter. But this transducer is a lot clearer than the 32 was. Throughout this series, right now, if you're seeing this for the first time, we're showing you all how to hook everything up. No doubt I'm going to do a ton of videos on this. Taylor's going to do a bunch of videos. He's going to come out there with me. He's going to help me get our, our settings down. We're going to go over settings as well. But for the most part, we're also going to do settings on the water. So we're going to do more videos where me and Taylor are going to be out there showing you stuff out there, making sure you get the most out of any of your electronics because he can show you certain things and get them set. But sometimes those settings need to be changed depending on on a lot of things you're doing. And so hopefully throughout the year, me and him will get together and go show you all that stuff. We've checked our clearance on being able to rotate this thing over into perspective mode. So what we wanna do is come back in here. We wanna cinch our mount down. We don't wanna overdo it. We don't wanna crack the plastic. We just wanna make sure she's not gonna rotate on us or go anywhere. Now the old ones would rotate a little bit. Yes. Yeah, so the old ones, the thing would be because of the way it clamped, you know, that, and even Correct. if you use this transducer on that style clamp, it's going to clamp on the side. So you have a little bit of, you know, play room to get this thing aligned a little bit different, if you will. But if, if you really take a second and look at it, this thing is exactly running parallel with how the trolling motor is pointing. That way your indicator on top of the trolling motor is always going to be right. Right here, what we're gonna do, just like how we talked about up here on top of the uh, trolling motor when we were managing our wires, we had the service loop. You're gonna have the same kind of service loop here. You don't want it to be huge. You don't want it to be small either. You just want it to be enough. And I find a loop kind of somewhere around that is gonna be enough to be able to loosen this off and go over to perspective. And loosen this one off and roll over without having a ton of slack sticking out here on the side you know, or still within the side of the transducer so nothing's going to come right here and catch it anything like that and it's still loose you just don't want any of this stuff tight because these cables are small you know that's they're sensitive you just don't want it to you know get abused any more than we're already going to just by our normal day-to-day -day fishing and then what we're going to do here because todd likes to fish shallow a lot we're not going to go quite as high as what we would a lot of guys trolling motors. A lot of them, you know, we'll, you'll see tape up to here just depending on how they fish, you know, how much they think they're going to need to raise and lower it. We're going to leave Todd's down a little bit, you know, probably right in here. That way he's got that adjustment right there to get up into shallower water because it's just, uh, it's, you can tape it up more if you want to. You're just going to have to be conscious of that and, and cut that tape or something during the day while you're fishing and that just, take some time away from yeah, what you're I, doing. I ain't doing that. And one other thing, on these new 34 transducers, they come with a ferrite clip, which is an interference, you know, preventative. Um, 
it's not a necessary thing they do advise that you put it on there just to help keep your picture as clear as you can um, you can either install it at the far end down where the uh, it's going to plug into the box which we'll show you in a little bit or you can put it on right here either which way it generally works better if you plug it in down by the box because you're filtering it out there versus filtering it out here where you still have all this length of cable going down to the box finishing up the trolling motor we're going to mount our stabilizer bar this is the holder for it we'll cut the stabilizer to length at the very end once we get everything set up we've got three of these little short bolts and washers After we get it taped up to here, what we're gonna do, I like to run it through this little spot right here on the stabilizer holder. It acts as a cable management piece to keep you from you know, having that hanging down everywhere, you know, getting in the mount and getting caught and pinched because that's not what you want while you're fishing, trying to live scope up some big fish. Get this fed through here. We got it all fed up through here. What we want to do is we want to leave a service loop just like we do down here and up at the top we'll make sure we got plenty of room for turning you know all the way 360 around to here the strolling motor will go you know just a hair past 360 like most of them will so as you can see we got plenty of cable both ways never going to get too tight and anything like that and that extra slack for when you've got it pulled up that way it's not going to get pinched in here or anything that's what we're looking for so, next, this is going to scare a lot of people, but trust me, it's not going to hurt anything. What we're going to do here is we're going to take and we're going to cut this collar off because Garmin has a cable management system right through here. But with that right there, that collar is too big on there. So, just going to take and we're going to break this collar off. Just like that. And in your live scope system box, you're gonna have a replacement set. It's just like the same size that comes for the network cables, which you'll see us putting those on in a little bit. But that allows us to run that down through there. And that way you don't have to worry about it just laying up on the boat or like I've seen and like a lot of people did to begin with when these first come out and had to make some kind of management system on top of this channel. This keeps it in that channel, keeps it protected. Just a lot less chance of something happening to it down there, so. All right, so now for the one spot that I mentioned earlier that you'll ever see me use a zip tie on a live scope transducer cable. You read it in the instructions, they tell you not to do it. And this is the only spot it's okay to do it. And you're gonna see why. We've got a little hole set right here. We're gonna loop this zip tie through here. I'm gonna lay that transducer cable up in there and we're not gonna get this tight. We're gonna get this down kind of sort of somewhere like that. So we still got plenty of free slack ain't hurting nothing it's just keeping it held up out of the way and you got the same thing right down here for where it exits that channel we just want to keep it held in place same thing we want it to be loose where we can slide the cable up and down through it Now we're gonna clip off these zip ties and get them out of the way. All right, we're gonna get in here and we're gonna run our sticks back up to the front. Before we get too far along, we're gonna get this live scope system pulled back in here into this box. We got the uh, live scope wires snaked in up here above the tubes and everything above the wall. Got them down here, got them hooked up. So now we're gonna mount this box on these FXRs, we can put it right here on this wall 
still see your status light right here in the middle for troubleshooting and it's up out of the way that way todd can fill this thing up with all the goodies and by the way these are the screws that come with the uh live scope system to mount the box with hey what's up guys while we're installing this remember this was for my my new boat and i had all my electronics on there right all all four of my garments all the trolling motor live scope everything so we were doing everything at once some of you guys will just be installing your live scope from there it's pretty basic right we're just going to run the wires from your from your live scope and from your graph into that black box that's installed in my rod locker from there the only other thing you're going to need and this is just if you're installing one graph with one live scope and one box that's you need all that now when we're talking about the black box to a battery what those guys do at jones marine electronics they have their own wiring kit okay they have a the right wire to engage wire and they have a wiring kit that goes directly to a battery okay so they have that there you can buy it there you can call them up right now and get them get one from them that's what they use and that way that's what's going to hook up to your black box we don't have that on there because like i said we were hooking up everything so when we hook stuff up we have we're, we're having nema cables and other graphs and everything i mean it's a, it's a big complicated system if you're wanting that that's going to be on our next video where we show us hooking up all of it like everything all the graphs all the wires all that stuff that's all going to be on the next video so stay tuned for that but for in the meantime that should be all of it on how to hook up your live scope the correct way all right thanks guys follow along we're gonna have more and more videos about all this stuff about any of these little suggest like i said some of you guys might already know how to do some of this stuff but i promise you if you listen along taylor's got some great suggestions you know he, he did a phenomenal job explaining everything there is to know about all of these hookups about live scope and garments and electronics and batteries and depth everything right Wealth of knowledge for you guys. All right. See y'all.